For more on what's happening in Ukraine, I'm joined now by retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell. Uh, Sean, what is the latest on the strikes and the impact on power supply in Kiev? Well, tragically, it's becoming a bit of a regular pattern, isn't it? The Russian strikes on uh, Ukrainian energy infrastructure. Good example. It's happened all across the country. Good example in Kiev, though, where there's still most of the um, city is without power. These are not military targets. The World Health Organization's warned of a humanitarian catastrophe looming because the hospitals are no longer able to do critical operations there. Why is Putin doing it? Well, it looks likely with his forces performing badly on the battlefield, that almost certainly he's closing in on the position where he wants to negotiate, wants to put pressure on the Ukrainian population so that they actually lose the will uh, to continue fighting. But I think that's almost impossible to achieve. And a defiant um, example in Kyiv um, last night was they were playing Frank Sinatra's My Way on loudspeakers in the city. What about the Donbass? This is an area that we've focused on a lot over the last nine months, but winter is coming, isn't it? And, and it, that's really going to change the situation on the ground. Yeah, so the situation up, up, up to your right over there, the area of white is what the Russians are still fighting for. But the weather's changed. Win winter is arriving. The rains are there, thick mud. It's not going to stop the fighting, but it's become a bit of an artillery battle uh, as we go. Um, interesting, though, with the only in about six weeks' time, the temperatures will plummet, the ground will turn hard again with the frost and it'll become incredibly difficult, minus 20 degrees or, or potentially less than that. The West is supplying lots of specialist cold weather equipment. Um, here's an example of Ukraine earlier on this year, when it was in the rains, it's going to get a lot worse than this. Um, but of course the West providing lots of high-tech equipment, that will not be available to the Russians with lots of conscripts. This is going to be an incredibly difficult and cold winter for some of those Russian conscripts. And how do you think this is playing out back at home for President Putin? It, it doesn't seem to be going as he would have liked it to have done. How is he going to bolster support? Yeah, so Russia on the back foot, it's done at least uh, one mobilisation. Allegedly, they're looking at potentially another one. Morale's allegedly low, and Russia will want to be doing everything to bolster support at home. Intelligence reports that at Belgorod, which is literally just to the uh, just inside uh, the Russian uh, border there, the Russians are planning to do a false flag operation. In other words, mount a some sort of event which makes it look as if Ukraine has invaded Russia and therefore put the fear into the Russian population and therefore galvanise support. In reality, for Ukrainians, nothing could be further from the truth. There's no motivation from the go to Russia. Indeed, it will almost certainly be a red line for Western support and Western weapons if they were to do so. And I think, therefore, we've got to be really careful about how we interpret anything we see in this complex information age conflict. OK, Sean, thanks very much for that.